When we first saw St. Rita at the Kneeler, we knew she'd need a lot of work. It was a beautifully sculpted statue, but in rough shape with even the crucifix shattered and broken in two. She came to our workshop and the restoration process began. More than just wiping off many years of dust and dirt buildup on the statue, this process of using a slightly dampened warm cloth uh, across the surface of the paint is actually intended to lift off a lot of paint chips. There are already hundreds that have become revealed by this wiping process. So you can see as we're wiping down some of the places that don't even look like they have paint chips, it does peel off because of the coarseness of the cloth. So what this will do is it'll expose areas uh, that we will have to give a lot of extra attention to as we sand it down and get it ready. We also want to be careful not to sand too far because a lot of this plaster has got wood grain carved into it to make it look more like an actual wooden kneeler. A compressor can force air from close range right under some of the hard to see paint chips and peels as the next step before sanding in earnest. Careful examination, make sure the surface is smooth everywhere and ready for painting. The plaster corpus was in need of repair and once removed, we were able to take the broken bottom stump, fill the gaps with new plaster, especially around that steel socket to once again perch the crucifix atop the kneeler's upper rail. Then we filled the broken section of the cross together from the inside, epoxy adhesive and a plaster textured edge to make it look like one piece of wood again. Back to the slow but important stage of sanding and smoothing out the surface of the tunic. Note this statue dates all the way back to 1914 from a Chicago maker, De Prato Statuary, still in business all these years later. And what may at first seem tedious is actually an important part of preparing the statue's surface for priming and painting. All those cream undertones of the under plaster represent either an imperfection or in most cases, an old paint chip that was painted over, leaving a ridge which we need to eliminate. Around her eyes, her brow and her chin, St. Rita gets a facelift of sorts with liquid plaster applied by hand. Wet fingers eliminate even the grooves left by the stroke of fingerprints. Her coarse hands are resurfaced and smoothed edges nicked or banged up sometime over the past century. An epoxy-based sculpting material repairs the edges of the carvings and curves which have been chipped out over the years. Next, the replastered face and cheeks are smoothed with a 600 grit fine sandpaper and the priming and painting of the base coat begins. St. Rita's rosary was repaired and repainted, and as Pauline takes over painting the main structure, we move inside to work on the crucifix. With multiple layers of paint and paint chips now removed, the uh, corpus sanded, uh, the shoulders which were broken now re-sculpted, we're at a stage where we're getting ready to reattach the corpus to the cross. Multiple layers and shades of chestnut brown respect the original colors, and they make the kneeler look more like wood. Here I'm painting hands and realistic skin tones, and with a fine tip brush, I create a nice clean edge so that one color doesn't blend into another, which might happen with airbrushing. And now with the corpus, which had been in pretty rough shape, fully restored and now secured back onto the cross, which had been in numerous pieces, we're able to put it back onto the sculpture for Pauline to do her final touches. It's in the fine detail that you get the realism that really brings the statue to life. Uh, people tend to identify with expressions in the eyes especially, so that's one extremely important element of creating a really beautiful face. And a beautiful face it is once again, from the old to the fully restored. And once the project gets the artist's final okay and is fully cured, the remaining challenge is to securely transport the statue and deliver it safely back to its new contemplative home.